Nation. Welcome to the first episode of The Captain's Chair, where I will be going through Star Trek episodes in chronological order, every series in chronological order, and review each episode. This is the first episode, so we are on the very first episode of Star Trek, chronologically. The first show chronologically is Star Trek Enterprise, which was released between 1998 and 2002. Star Trek Enterprise details the very first ship to leave Earth and explore the galaxy. This first ship being the NX-01 Enterprise. So let's take a look at Episode 1 of Star Trek Enterprise, Broken Bow. In Broken Bow, we meet Jonathan Archer, and Jonathan Archer's father advanced the warp drive past the point of the inventor of the warp drive, and has pushed the technology to be capable of up to warp 5. A huge achievement for the humans. Their Vulcan allies seem very suspicious of them and not wanting the best for humans at this time. Archer is chosen to be the captain of their flagship, their new ship capable of warp 5. But they keep putting off the launch because the Vulcans do not think the humans are ready to venture out into the broader galaxy. This all changes when a Klingon named Klang um, crash lands on Earth somewhere in the Midwest of the United States and is um, attacked and almost killed by Sulaban agents. And Sulaban are these genetically enhanced people who, um, when we're introduced to them, they can like slide under a door. They can. Um, they have better uh, eyesight. They have better hearing. They're these genetically enhanced individuals, and they're set up in this episode to be the primary villains of the show going forward. Klang is nearly killed and is um, is, is investigated um, by Starf Starfleet, um, which, which consists of the humans and their Vulcan allies. They are looking into Klang's, um, what, what appears to be a demise, but he is, he is spared. And so, um, with their medics, thanks to a Denobulan named Phlox, they are able to keep him alive um, when the Vulcans would just let him die. Archer believes that they need to take Klang um, back to uh, the Klingon's home world, um, which the Vulcans disagree with. Um, this is a big chance for the humans to do something at Starfleet um, in the broader galaxy, and it's, ex it's an excuse to take the NX-01 Enterprise on its maiden voyage. So Archer fights for this, and he assembles a crew. He invites Denobulan Phlox to be the medical officer, and he recruits Hoshi Sato to be their um, translator, um, because she has studied alien languages, and she is the most qualified person for that job, apparently. And on board the crew, uh, on board the ship, we meet the rest of the crew, who consists of Floridian uh, Charles Tripp Tucker III, and it consists of Malcolm Reed, and it consists of Travis Mayweather. Trip Tucker is the uh, engineer. Malcolm Reed is the tactical officer, and Travis Mayweather is the helmsman. We are in, then introduced to a character with the Vulcans named T'Pol, and T'Pol is there as sort of an ambassador. Uh, T'Pol is sent by the Vulcans to uh, somewhat begrudgingly, because the Vulcans still don't think that this mission to take Klang back to uh, the Klingons is a worthy mission. They disagree that the humans are taking this approach. But the humans do it anyway, and so the Vulcans are like, alright, if you're going to do it, we might as well have a member of uh, our people representing us and our interests on your ship to keep an eye on things, just in case you humans do anything stupid. So to Paul, um, to Archer's chagrin, because Archer... Captain Jonathan Archer is not a big fan of the uh, Vulcans at this time. They, they, they were a constant thorn in the side of his father as he was trying to advance their technology. They weren't helpful. They seemed to hinder human progress. So Archer uh, is slightly against the Vulcans. But luckily for um, the Vulcans, he is like, all right, T'Pol can come along. So they set out to go to the Klingon homeworld. Along the way, they stop on this planet and are attacked and ambushed by Sulaban. They're captured by the Sulaban there. 
Um, but the reason that they stopped off at this planet, I jumped ahead of myself, is because the Sulaban uh, sneak aboard the NX-01 Enterprise on their way to uh, the Klingon homeworld and capture and abduct Klang, who uh, they kept in their medical bay for his wounds and had him strapped down. And Hoshisato was unable to uh, in be able to translate what he was saying. And they were working on figuring out what he was saying because he'd regained consciousness. But then the Sulaban creep in and they have these camouflaging powers so that they can like for all intensive purposes go invisible uh and, the, and they sneak aboard the ship and abduct clang and that is why they um track the the sulaban to this planet they go down in search of clang and then the sulaban capture archer and several other members of the crew this creates quite a problem as you would expect but some sulaban are not so evil there's a sulaban named Saren. And Saren is a good Sulaban who's fighting against the other Sulaban. She mentions a temporal cold war, which is going to be a very important concept going forward. Um, and that she is able to break Archer and the other members of the crew out of the prison um, from, from the Sulaban there. But not before Archer uh, jumps in front of a laser blast, in, get, gets injured in the process um, to, to, to save... Uh, a member of his crew, and Saren is, is, is killed. Um, then they uh, are able to uh, find Sulaban ships, which the Sulaban ships are these big orb things that congregate together, and Archer goes over there to get Clang, um, as they've learned that is the location from Saren before she died, so he's there to try to get Clang back, right? Um, and Archer goes aboard the ship and is w with uh, with Trip and Trip and uh, Clang are able to get back to the Enterprise. But Archer stays on to see if he can investigate, and he comes across uh, the Sulaban's uh, leader and a mysterious figure from the future, who uh, the crew, the cast and crew, referred to as Future Guy. And Future Guy is this mysterious figure here and. Archer is trying to figure out what he's about in this weird room where this f person from the future is communicating with the Sulaban. So Archer's trying to piece together what exactly is happening, what exactly is going on here, and um, he does indeed manage to escape the Sulaban, and they are able to complete their mission for Earth, and they are able to drop the Klingon Clang off on, uh, on the Klingon's homeworld there, and uh, the, the Klingons are seemingly grateful. They uh, take take uh, Klang in and uh, they are able to have some pretty peaceful, for Klingon human interactions at this time, some pretty peaceful uh, conversation. And it turns out that there was a message carried in the blood of Klang all along, in, in the DNA of his blood. And that message is able to be interpreted by the Klingons. A mission gone successful. For Starfleet, this is great news for the human, uh, for, for Earth and the humans at, at Starfleet. This, this is a sign that they're going in the right direction. This is progress. Um, they have completed their mission out in the stars and proved that they are capable. The Vulcans still doubt them, but it's a step in the right direction for sure. And by the end of the episode, Archer asks if T'Pol will stay on as first officer for the foreseeable future, to which she, she accepts. She, she has a distaste of humans at the start of this episode as well, but it seems like there's a little crack open to where Archer gained a little bit of her respect in this first episode. So she will brave it out and stay among these, these crazy humans on this Starfleet ship. And that was the two-parter Broken Bow. What did I think of Broken Bow? First, I'm going to talk about the positives. The positives here are very, very obvious right off the bat. Jonathan Archer is a really great down-to-earth captain who has the grit to be willing to do what is necessary. His style of command is very personable. Uh, it's not very um, by regulations. He's not very like um, he's not very uh, you have to pe speak properly to me. Um, he's very candid in his approach to command which is something I appreciated and enjoyed right off the bat. I also really like Trip Tucker. He has a great personality, a comedic, 
fun personality. Topola is a very interesting character as well, as you are looking forward to seeing if these humans are going to be able and capable to continue to gain her respect. The Sulaban are another positive. What an interesting concept, these genetically enhanced individuals, and they are taking orders from the future. That is a striking, very interesting plot thread that is going to keep you interested. Uh, that, that was really well done. The design of the ship. I really love the design of the ship. It is really, really great. Malcolm Reed. I liked his personality and his accent so far. It's a very good start for, um, for, for some of these characters here. These characters are quickly gaining um, my admiration and respect. That being said, there are a couple negatives that I wish to discuss. My first negative is in regards to how the Klingons and humans are getting along right here. Um, Klingons and humans eventually are going to become allies. But for many, many years, there was a lot of tension and fighting. This is why I don't like how they get along so chummy in this episode. I would wish to see more conflict and tension between these peoples. And I really didn't get a lot of uh, the tension there that I would be hoping for and looking for when these are early Klingon human interaction. I think that that was done poorly. I also have to say, Hoshi Sato is a character that so far I do not care a smidge about. This being, because she doesn't seem to be good at her job. They made a big show at the start of she is the most qualified person there is. Fair enough. But the whole first while that they have Clang aboard their ship, she is unable to get a translation, unable to fulfill her duties. That is the whole reason she is there. She is also complaining about the confines of being on a starship. Um, she seems like the most unideal person to have out there, which is something that baffled me. Um, why Archer specifically got her for the job when she really doesn't seem like she wants to be there or that it's necessary for her to be there right off the bat. So those are the negatives that I have for this episode. But overall, this was a really solid beginning to a show. I'm very interested in the ideas in our introduced. The action was done well. There's a lot of humor, a lot of heart. The dialogue was written well. The tensions between the humans and Vulcans, very interesting. This temporal Cold War, very intriguing. The story, very fulfilling and satisfying, is an introduction for humans to the galaxy at large. This episode gets a solid 4 out of 5 stars for me. This is super, super solid, super, super fun Star Trek. Good writing, good story good characters. I am very excited to continue discussing uh, Enterprise. But that is the only episode that I will be reviewing today. Join me next time when I discuss Season 1, Episode 2 of Star Trek Enterprise. <laughs>